What's going on everyone? It's Halo here again and today what I'm going to be doing is sharing with you guys different tips and tricks on how you can create really awesome fantasy landscape paintings. Do you guys ever find yourselves like scrolling through fantasy landscape paintings and thinking, oh my god, that just looks so good, but I can't figure out why it looks good. What if I were to tell you that there's a lot of different methods that you can use that break down all of these landscapes to their simplest form and make it really, really simple and easy to make insanely eye-catching landscape paintings? I would say that that's impossible. Yeah, I mean, I really don't know why you're lying. You really can't learn how to do art. It's a gift that you're born with, and you have to know how to do it from birth. You can't learn how to do art. Actually, quite literally, anyone can learn how to do art. It's just how much effort are you willing to put in and how much effort are you willing to learn? That's honestly the difference between somebody who does art and somebody who studies art. This misconception I think is probably one of the most damaging things to the mind is basically telling you that there's things that you can never do and that you can never learn. So let's get started learning some basic compositional skills, shall we? So what is composition? Composition is the way that visual elements in our artwork are arranged with each other. Here's a great example. Check out this sweet gray circle that I just painted. Can you see it? Probably not. How about if I changed my background to be darker? Now you can see it. How about if I change it lighter? Now you can see it again. Now in this image, it looks like the circle is much lighter. But in this image, it looks like the circle is much darker. Now this might seem like very rudimentary art knowledge, but what that tells us is the value of this gray circle is only its own value based on what it's next to and its relationship with the values that it's next to. Let's say that right now I wanted to paint a mountain. I'm gonna take some black, I paint a mountain. That's what my mountain looks like right now. How do I get this mountain to stand out more? I mean, I guess I could take some grays and put grays in here, but that doesn't necessarily make the mountain stand out more. What would make this mountain stand out more is if I accented its shape just a little more. And I can't necessarily do that with gray because there's gray already behind it. So if I take some white and I put things around it that force its shape to come forward, look at how much more black this looks. Now you can do a lot of these same methods just by using simple black, gray, and white and changing the way that the relationships play off of each other. So how many different ways can we utilize just a black, gray, and white composition, especially in landscapes? Well, let's make a landscape here. We could do a black background. We could do a gray, and then we could do white as our foreground. This is one way that we can do it. We can also reverse that completely and have white as our background, gray as our middle ground, black as our foreground. Let's try something different. Let's use gray as our background. We're gonna use black as our middle ground, and then we're gonna use white as our foreground here. Conversely, we can just take the same thing, invert it, and now we have gray as our background, white as our middle ground, and black as our foreground. Now on top of that, you can also do black as your background. You can do white, we'll grab some white, as your middle ground, and then you can use gray as your foreground. No matter how you decide to do your composition, this is a very easy and basic way to separate all of your darks, mediums, and lights from each other and to give themselves their own readable space. So in this painting video, I wanna have a couple adventurers staring off into the distance with a castle way off in the background. Now, what I'm gonna use is the same exact compositional method I used for this silly little picture of a guy and his dog in this tree. And that is the foreground is dark, the middle ground is gray, and the background is light. Now basically what you're watching me do here is I'm just putting down all of my gray in my middle ground. I'm throwing some of these little adventurers and a rock they're standing on in black in the foreground. And then I'm basically just making a bunch of super random shapes here. Now I want you to notice that I have variations of color in my middle ground. Even though I said I'm keeping it gray, I will never get it anywhere near as dark as my foreground. That basically means that my middle tone can go up a little bit in value and down a little bit in value, but I never want it to reach the same exact value as my foreground, which is black. Notice also in the foreground, I lightened up some of those rocks they were standing on, but I didn't lighten them up enough that they were the same value as my middle ground, which is gray. 
So I want you to notice a couple things that I've done here. This knight looking guy in the front, I really wanted him to stand out. And so I made all of the clouds kind of go around him in a halo effect. He now looks darker and thus more important because I made everything around him lighter. Now if we take a look at this girl looking figure and the guy holding the staff, if you notice to the left of them, all of the rocks around them are darker. But on purpose, I made all of the rocks and all of that hillside lighter around them so that those figures stood out a little bit more. Now I noticed because of that, I wanna put a little bit more light around the characters. So you'll see here that I actually expanded the shoreline up a little higher. And that's so that I could make all of the character silhouettes a little more stronger. So now I'm starting to notice that the characters don't stand out enough and there's not enough dark on the right hand side. It actually looks like it's very, very light across this whole piece. So you can see here that I put like a cove or a cavern above the characters' heads. And what this does is it forces you to look at the castle more and the characters more. Now if I look at this painting, I've got three hot spots of light. One over here next to the characters, one to the left of the castle, emboldening its silhouette, and then I've got one down here. Now there's nothing of interest down here, so if I don't want your eye to look over there, I'm just gonna darken that up a little bit, and look how much more you lean in towards this area right here. Just a small balancing like that changes your entire composition. Now, one thing I've learned is that if you have highlights everywhere, you have highlights nowhere. For example, right now, all our eye is drawn to these guys, and these are the most important people. Watch what happens if I take some of this white and throw it randomly up here, and randomly over here, and randomly up here, and randomly over here. Now, the composition oh. looks messy. Your eye actually is drawn in all kinds of different directions, whereas beforehand, you kept all of your highest contrast in the place where it meant the most. Actually, let's revisit the boy and the dog because I actually really liked that idea of having those together. And I'll show you a couple different ways I can use the same exact algorithm to figure out how to make a cool piece. Now, each time I do one of these paintings, I'm doing the exact same method over and over again. I'm figuring out what my foreground is, my middle ground is, my background, and I'm trying to give all of them their own different colors. If my background is too dark, then I try to lighten up a little bit of the foreground. If I find that there's too much highlights everywhere, I'll darken everything else up and try to pick a highlight. And this type of paying attention to composition works with even the most crude of drawings. It doesn't take a fantastic drawing to get a very good composition. Now what we went over today is just one of many different types of compositions, and it's called value composition. And without a good value composition, your art can appear flat or kind of boring because it lacks the contrast between the light elements and the dark elements that hold it together. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and found these tips really helpful for your own artwork. While I'm in the process of doing all of this art for my own game, I wanted to give back to my community and all of the supporters to this channel and give out art tutorials that I think would be really helpful to young and growing artists. And if you guys did find this video helpful and you wanted to see more of them, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you guys can get alerted whenever I'm posting new videos. And as always, if you know somebody who's interested in art, share this video with them. I'm sure they would appreciate it. Until the next one, guys, thank you so much.